Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve software has made a name for itself as the premium Hollywood color grading tool, but has been getting constant updates and improvements and to the extent that it has become a very powerful timeline video editor with a decode and encode engine that far surpasses what Adobe Premiere uses. I've covered it quite a bit on my channel over the past few months, ever since picking up my own Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro video camera, including a cool collab with Wendell from Level 1 Dex. One of the amazing features of the paid studio version of Resolve is the ability to set up a dedicated render server that you send your projects to for final rendering and export. That way your primary machine is free to keep editing or do something else. This is also really great for editing teams. We cover more of why you might want to do this in the previous video linked in the video description down below. Also down there will be a link to an accompanying post on the Level 1 forums as this is a very lengthy and dense video so you might want a written guide to follow with the video. Come chat with us there. In this video, I'll walk you through setting up a DaVinci Resolve render server on Linux and showing you how to connect to it and send your render jobs to it from other machines, including Windows computers. In another video, or probably the previous one before this one, I'll have walked you through setting up that server on Windows if that's more your speed. For this, you'll need a few things. I'm using vanilla just base Ubuntu, as I've had serious issues getting Resolve running at all, or at least keeping it stable on the side flavors. You should be using 1804 or newer. 1604 can work, but you have to be you have to update some stuff, and that may cause potential issues. Also, you'll need a dedicated GPU. If you're using NVIDIA, you'll need the proprietary drivers for your card installed. I installed the 4.10 drivers at initial setup, but there are newer ones available. You can use AMD cards, but Resolve will not utilize both NVIDIA and AMD cards for the software in the same machine, and you'll just generally have the best results with NVIDIA graphics cards and NV Ink and CUDA acceleration, at least for now. I'll touch on this later. How you build out your render server is ultimately up to you. My first render server build was my old AMD FX 9590 rig with a Noctua NHD 15 cooler, 32 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA GTX 970. I added a 750 Ti to it to test scaling as well. With Wendell at Level 1 Tech's headquarters, we built a ridiculous render machine with an AMD Threadripper 2970X, 64 gigs of RAM, and four GPUs, two 2080 Ti's, a 1080 Ti, and a 1080 or something like that. Although the power supply would only support t two GPUs at one time without kicking off during render. We tried. With our testing and the sample projects that I put together, we saw minimal scaling in actual render times with multiple GPUs and jumping from 1080 Ti's to 2080 Ti's. But especially if you're working with beefy 8K red footage or something like that, multi-GPU will definitely benefit timeline performance while editing. But then you want those added benefits in your editing machine before adding more power to your rendering machine. The benefit being that even if your render machine renders slower than your editing PC, your editing PC is free to keep working, editing, and so on. I would recommend aiming for a minimum of 32 gigabytes of RAM in your render PC. 64 gigs is preferred, as Resolve with 4K footage or higher can chew through RAM and VRAM like crazy. But again, prioritize specs in your editing PC for timeline performance first. That matters more. The specs you need mostly depends on the videos you'll be making, the decoders and encoders you're using for your video footage, and the accelerations they can utilize, the kinds of effects, transitions and scaling you're doing, and etc. With the higher-end NLEs, there's no hard rule of X program can't use more than Y resources. Different workloads have different needs. I can make Resolve 100% max out my main system, 64 gigs of RAM, 11 gigs of VRAM, and all 36 threads on my i9. That doesn't mean a more normal 8-core CPU won't work wonders for you in the software. My new rig I just built during my Gamdius Talos P1 case review features the Intel Core i7-6900K, 32GB of Corsair LPH, LPX Vengeance RAM at 3000 MHz, a GTX 1080 and 970, and a super fast NVMe from ADATA XPG as well. This will be both a render server and a streaming rig and has the specs to back it up. 
First, you'll need to install some dependencies. Open a terminal and type sudo apt install libssl1.0.0 ocl-icd-opencl-dev fake root xoriso, which is not a condiment for food, by the way, PostgreSQL, I can always say that wrong, don't worry, I know. And if you're on NVIDIA, NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit. Once installed, download the latest DaVinci Resolve Studio for Linux installer from their site. Link is in the description. Thankfully, Studio users don't have to, have to type in all of our personal information each time we want to download. We can just hit download only. Extract the zip to a folder of your choosing. I just left it in downloads, but you can make a dedicated folder if you need to. Next, download the Make Resolve Deb script from the link in the video description. This should match your Resolve version number. So at the time of recording, we have Resolve 15.2 and Make Resolve Deb 15.2. Extract the contents of this archive to the exact same folder you extracted the Resolve zip to. Open a terminal and navigate to that directory that you extracted all these files to. We're gonna run the Make Resolve Deb script. So type in a terminal dot slash Make Resolve Deb underscore 15 dot your version number dot sh and then studio. I just type make resolve deb and then a hit tab and it finishes the rest for me. Tab is your friend. This can be used to install the free version of resolve in Linux as well by typing light instead of studio when paired with the free installer, but we, the light version of resolve does not let you do this render server stuff. So that's not what we're using here. You will need the paid studio version for this. This step does take a minute. So let it just sit there and do its thing. I, it might say that there was one error at the end, but this should be fine. Once done, it's time to install the Debian package file. Type sudo dpkg-i davinci resolve blah 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 dot deb. Again, tab is your friend here. Let it install. Also, if you plan on using 10 gigabit networking, set up and configure your specific NIC to make sure things are running properly before proceeding. Once done, it's time to configure Postgre S Post Postgre SQL. I'm never gonna say it right. In a terminal, type sudo u postgres psql postgres. And once you get to the prompt, type slash password postgres and set up the password. Then type slash q. Next, you need to make a change to the postgresql configuration. In a terminal, type sudo gedit or whatever your text editor is slash etc slash postgresql slash 10, that's the version number for me, slash main slash pg underscore hba.conf. If your PostgreSQL version is different than 10, replace 10 with your version number. Mine was 10. Scroll down to the bottom with lines that describe local socket connections. There should be a line that says local, all, all, peer. In that line, change peer to md5. Save and close the file. In the terminal, type sudo service PostgreSQL restart. And honestly, I just recommend rebooting your system at this point. Made things easier for me. Next, you will want to set up file sharing between your two PCs. I'm editing on Windows and rendering on Linux, but it's probably easier to just communicate between two Linux boxes or between two Windows boxes or whatever, firewall allowing. I also store my footage on Synology NAS drives and mounting these can Linux can be a little bit finicky. I have found a few different mounting setups that work for other people, but the only one that seems to work for my DS1817 plus NAS was to make a folder in slash MNT uh, with your share name and then in a terminal type mount the IP address colon volume one, or if you have multiple volumes, your volume number slash the share name, which for me was edit two and then space slash MNT slash the share name that you want to mount it to. Some instructions have a slash immediately following the colon, but not having one is what actually worked for me. You may need to install SIFS utils, Samba or SMBFS, depending on your system. Now this command only mounts for a specific session. So once you make sure that is working, you'll need to add it to your fstab file to mount it every time you log in or however you prefer to manage that. If you're storing footage on your local editing machine, you'll need to share that folder from your editing machine and mount it on the render server. If you're storing footage on the render server as a file server as well, then the vice versa applies. Take note of the exact mount points or drive letters on both machines. This will be necessary in a moment. It's time to actually launch DaVinci Resolve. Activate with your license key or make sure your USB dongle is inserted before launching. Go through setup. We're going to set up a project server that manages and sees the project files. Both the editing client and the render server need to be connected to the same project database. 
and the projects imported or created on that database in order to be rendered between computers. But the database server does not need to be running on the render server itself. Some editing studios use a Mac Mini with its fast storage as the project database server. I'm really not sure why you would want that as a separate node in your configuration, but it is possible. Let's make a shared database. Once you've reached the project manager, click the Show High Databases button next to where it says Projects, and then click New Database at the bottom. In the window that appears, change from Connect to Create. Click the PostgreSQL radio button. Name your server. Typically, I'll make this the same name as the PC name itself to keep locations easy and easy to remember. For location, type in the local IP of your machine in place of 127.0.1 or .0.0.1. To find this, open a terminal and type ipconfig-a and hit enter. Typically, the network device you want starts with 192.168, but this may dif differ depending on your networking, but you probably know what you're doing then. Give your database a username and a password. Unless you have specific reasoning, the defaults should work fine here, and hit create. Once your new database is made and selected, you'll have an empty project list or an auto-generated untitled project. Do leave that one there. If you need to move projects from a local database or another PC's database, find that project in its appropriate database project manager, right-click it, and hit Export and save the file. This can take a good amount of time for bigger projects, and it doesn't really indicate that anything is happening. So if the program becomes unresponsive or just looks like it's taking forever, leave it a bit until it's done. It will finish. Once finished, navigate to your new shared database, right-click in the empty space, and hit Import. Select that file. Again, this will take some time and may become unresponsive while it's happening. You may have to relink your footage the first time that you open it after moving it between databases. Uh, for this, simply select your footage in the Media Workspace, right-click, or you can right-click entire bins and choose Relink Media, and then navigate to the folder that it's stored in and tell it to find it. Next, you'll want to connect to your shared database on your editing client computer on the same network. Open Resolve's Project Manager on that computer, click New Database, leave it on Connect this time. Choose the PostgreSQL radio button, Type in the name that you gave it, the IP address of the render machine that you're connecting to, username and password and that you just set, and you're good to go. Hit Add. If the PostgreSQL is set up and your networking is working on both machines and it's cooperating, it should add the server to your server list and you'd be good to go. If not, check on your PostgreSQL settings and configurations and on Windows, you'll have to allow it through the firewall and firewall gets really messy and yada yada. But Assuming those things are set up and cooperating, it'll work. Now, whenever you make new projects, you should create them in the shared database from the start, and then you'll be good to go. Now go ahead and open that untitled project, as we need to change some settings within Resolve itself. Click the DaVinci Resolve menu option and select Preferences. I do recommend watching some other guides or reading the manual to fully optimize the overall settings for your specific machines, but I'll cover the relevant ones that are important here. Under Memory and GPU, set how much RAM that you want Resolve to have access to. You'll know if you have a reason for it not to use everything, but do check on it. Leave GPU processing mode on auto, unless you have a reason to believe otherwise, but check the box next to Use Display GPU for Compute unless you have a reason not to. If you don't do this on single GPU systems, you'll end up using all of your rendering on software CPU mode only, which is not what you want. Here you can also make sure your GPUs are detected properly, and if you have multiple GPUs, they will show up here. You do not need SLI for this. You can mix, mix and match within the NVIDIA platform, but Resolve on Linux only utilizes CUDA, thus only utilizes NVIDIA GPUs for the time being on Linux. It can work with AMD GPUs, but may not leverage OpenCL just yet. They are still working on it, and you may have to find specific drivers or OpenCL toolkits to get it to work. Go to Decode Options and uncheck Use GPU for Blackmagic Raw Decode. This is fine on Windows, but causes glitching and crashing on Linux at the current update. Of course, if you are never going to utilize Blackmagic's raw codec from their cameras, then this isn't an issue, but it's worth checking on anyway. Make sure the other three boxes here are checked. Next, go to Media Storage. Here, add your local network share and your footage locations. The Mount column is where storage mounts are located according to the render machine itself or the machine that you're on, the local map address. But Mapped Mount lets you input a secondary map lo mount location, kind of like an alias. This will be where it's mounted on your editing machine. So since I use Windows to edit and use my Linux machine to render, 
uh, my mount is the local share that I have my Synology NAS mounted to on Linux, and then mapped mount is where the locations, the drive letters that they are mount, mounted to on Windows. That way Resolve knows where your footage is supposed to be in relation to both machines at the same time, and then just put vice versa on the other computer. Now, while you can render to network storage locations or even to your editing PC from your render machine, you get the best performance out of writing to a local drive within the rendering machine itself. I recommend setting up a shared folder for renders on the rendering machine and mounting that folder on your editing PC and adding these to your storage locations on both computers and setting your projects to render there during export for the best possible performance and fastest renders. I'll cover this more in the next section. This concludes the initial setup. Now I'll show you how to manage render jobs and some other important notes. Now that we have the database set up, you're able to create and edit projects. To prepare your render server for remote rendering, open that untitled project in your shared database and then go to the workspace menu and choose remote rendering. This will let you monitor queued render jobs, the progress of ongoing renders, things like that, but it does not let you interact with the software. At the time of recording, the DaVinci Resolve manual still references a special remote rendering workspace accessible by right-clicking empty space in the project manager that acts more like a smaller form queue, but this is outdated. This workspace is no longer available and you must open a project and then use the workspace menu to access the remote rendering workspace. Blackmagic staff are aware of the issue and will update the manual in time. You can also launch a headless remote render server by sending the launch command via a terminal with dash rr at the end. So slash opt slash resolve slash bin slash resolve dash rr. But this is 100% headless. You don't even get terminal based feedback as to how the renders are progressing or anything like that. So I don't like this approach. I would at least like a little bit of text based feedback. Once you're ready to render something, it's time to head to the deliver tab in, your res in resolve on your editing computer. Give your render a name. And for the file, and then for location, you want to browse to the directory mapped and listed in Resolve on both machines. Again, I recommend telling it to render to a local drive inside the render machine itself for the best performance. Make sure you have write access to that folder in your folder sharing settings. Choose Format Settings and hit Add to Render Queue. Before you hit Start Render, click the little signal or wireless looking icon next to the queue entry and choose the name of your render server. The project has to be open from within the PostgreSQL database for this to really show up. It's also worth noting here that big multi-editor and multi-server workflows, you can actually use those to tell it to render on any available machine, which might have some workflow benefits for you if you need to space out your resource allocation. There are a couple very important considerations with your video format, however. On Windows, Resolve can utilize its own native H.264 encoder, but this is not available on Linux. If you try to send a render job to a Linux render server with the native encoder option selected for H.264, it will error out because that encoder is unavailable on the server. Instead, the Linux version just leverages GPU encoding for H.264 and H.265, which at this point is only NVIDIA as far as I can determine. This means that your editing and render machine should match having the same GPU family, NVIDIA or AMD, preferably NVIDIA at the moment. That way you can assign the correct encoder for H.264 or H.265 specific tasks. I've also had serious issues getting Resolve to cooperate with rendering the GoPro Cineform codec files on Ubuntu. This could be due to missing dependency or something like that, but I've not figured it out thus far. I used this mezzanine codec quite heavily in my Premiere Pro workflow over on Windows, so this was kind of disappointing. Also, if you're editing on Mac, ProRes export in Resolve is unavailable on Windows or Linux. But DNxHR is a fantastic multi-platform mezzanine codec that works on all operating systems and renders quite fast in Resolve and can kind of replace Cineform or ProRes. Also, you can install OFX plugins by putting the files in slash USR slash OFX slash plugins, although this directory might not exist yet and you'll have to create it. This location doesn't really follow Linux directory etiquette, but you can symbolic link it to somewhere in your home folder. That being said, most of the plugin suites that I have found are still Linux or are still Windows and Mac only, so just copying the OFX files does not allow them to work on your renders in Linux, so your mileage may vary. 
Hopefully, with this guide, updates notwithstanding, you are able to set up and run your own DaVinci Resolve render server and start offloading your render tasks or allowing for more efficient teamwork. If something is not working quite right, typically it has to do with the PostgreSQL or file permission configuration or firewalls, so I'd start there. Blackmagic forums are always there for help from other users or occasionally Blackmagic staff, and check out my post in the Level 1 forums as well, linked below. Down there also includes links to my other videos on this subject. While you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education if you found the video helpful. I'm Meeples Vox, and we do have a Patreon, and a PayPal, and a Ko-fi, and donor box, all sorts of ch YouTube channel memberships, all sorts of ways where you could support the channel and keep supporting free education. Like I said, I'm Meeples Vox. I will see you in the next one.